Chances are that at some point in your life, you've had a doctor pull out a rubber mallet and whack you on the knee. Your leg will have kicked forwards in response without you asking it to. What causes this proverbial knee-jerk reaction? Well, to make a long story short, what's going on is that your body thinks that your leg is suddenly moving backwards. And so to correct for this, it sends signals which cause your leg to push forward. It may seem like a strange mistake for your body to confuse getting hit in the knee with your leg moving back, but it makes sense once you understand how the body keeps track of your limbs. If you close your eyes and move your arm around for a few minutes, you're not going to lose track of where it is. The reason you know where it is, despite not being able to see it, is because your brain is keeping track of the signals it's sending and receiving signals from your arm about its position. Your ability to sense how much force you're exerting and where your body parts are in relation to each other is called proprioception. This comes from the Latin proprius for one's own and perception. So it's your perception of yourself, of your body. This is one of several senses beyond the traditional five, like your senses of time, temperature, balance, and acceleration. The part of proprioception we're interested in is a type of sensory receptor called a muscle spindle. Muscle spindles are embedded in your muscles and have stretch receptors, which send signals to your brain when the muscle changes length. These receptors are what cause the knee-jerk response. Let's look at what happens anatomically when you get hit in the knee. The correct spot to hit someone to elicit a knee-jerk reflex is right below the kneecap. The anatomical name for the kneecap is the patella, and it turns out that what you're hitting is the patellar tendon, which connects the patella to your shin bone. The patella is kind of floating in a way, because it's suspended by tendons on both sides. You may have noticed that if you straighten your leg and relax your thigh muscle, you can kind of wiggle it around a bit. This is because it's connected to your shin bone by the patellar tendon on the bottom, and on the top, it's connected to your thigh muscle by another tendon. So what happens when you get hit in the patellar tendon is the force of the impact deforms the tendon a little bit, and this causes a stretch in your thigh muscle. When the muscle spindles in your thigh feel the stretch happening, they immediately send signals to your lower spinal cord. Now these signals never actually reach your brain. They immediately turn around and go back to your leg. When they get there, they do two things. They tell your thigh muscle to contract, and they also relax your hamstring muscle, which is the opposing muscle that moves your lower leg backwards. This allows your lower leg to be kicked forwards freely and counteract whatever stretching your muscle spindles are feeling in your thigh. Normally this would be useful if, for example, you're jumping off of something and landing. As you land, you might suddenly have this stretching force pulling your lower leg backwards. In that case, your body will try to automatically counter this and restore balance by pushing your lower leg back the other way, and that might keep you from hurting yourself. Of course, it's not a very helpful response when you get hit with a mallet, but I really want to stress that even though I say, you know, your body thinks that your lower leg is moving backwards, that's really just so I can explain this more easily. This is a purely mechanical response, and there's no thinking involved. This circuit has proven evolutionarily useful, probably because of situations where your leg is forced backwards, and not because of rubber mallets. But to say that your body is confused amounts to saying that your phone is confused and thinks you want to call someone when you butt dial. As I said, this reflex doesn't go through your brain. It only goes to your lower spinal cord and back, so your leg is truly moving on its own. Despite this, it's actually still possible to consciously change the way that you respond by trying not to move your leg and sending inhibitory signals down there. Interestingly, there's a way that doctors can stop you from interfering with the reflex. It's called the Gendrasic Maneuver, and it involves hooking your hands together like this and pulling outwards. The act of holding this position and pulling outwards will actually strengthen your reflex response. Somehow it seems to stop you from consciously interacting with your reflex. The funny thing is that even if you know that this maneuver is only meant to stop you from stopping your reflex, it'll still work. This makes it a great trick for doctors who are dealing with uncooperative patients. The knee-jerk reflex is not unique. In fact, it's an example of a series of reflexes called myotatic or deep tendon reflexes. The general idea is that when a muscle suddenly gets longer, it sends signals which automatically cause it to contract and also relax the muscle that opposes it. It turns out that most of your skeletal muscles will do this, but the ones which show the strongest responses are those which are used to opposing gravity. This makes sense if you go back to my example of using the knee-jerk reflex when you're landing from a jump. 
For example, if you catch a heavy ball and your arms are suddenly pulled down, then it's helpful for your biceps to have this same, you know, biceps jerk reflex. The same thing will work with your jaw, your triceps, and your ankle. These can all be demonstrated in the same way as the knee jerk reflex, by hitting someone on the tendons attached to these muscles and seeing if their body parts jerk. Here's an example of an ankle jerk reflex. I would try to show you the others, but many of these reflexes can be very slight in healthy patients. That's why the knee jerk reflex is primarily the one that doctors will use. It's the easiest one to read. So that's how the knee jerk reflex works. Thanks for watching ExplainCast. If you enjoyed it, please rate and subscribe, and feel free to send me suggestions for future episodes at twitter.com slash explaincast.